Okay, so let's talk about why the derivative of sine is cosine and why the derivative of cosine is negative sine. Well, here's a diagram of the unit circle. I've kind of filled some stuff in, right? So we measure an angle theta relative to going in the positive direction of the x-axis. This looks like, for example, about pi over 4 at the moment. Cosine of theta is simply the x value of the point on the unit circle. Notice that that's going to go to negative 1 here, back to positive 1, and in between the x values between negative 1 and 1. Sine theta is the y coordinate here, that's the height, which can again be positive up to positive 1 or down to negative 1 down here. And so what we want to do is we want to think about, okay, how do we find the derivative of this? Well, the derivative we actually think about often with a rate of change. And so I'm going to use time instead of angle theta here. So I'm going to use t here. And let's say that at time t, we're at angle t as well. And we're just trying to trace a particle going around in a circle. So at time t, cosine t and sine t are the x and the y coordinates of a particle that's traveling around in a circle. So let's first off, let's take a look at the speed of the particle. Speed, remember, ignores direction. So we just count the total distance over the total time. Well, the total distance, this is a circumference of the circle. This is the unit circle. It's got hypotenuse 1, 2 pi r. So that's 2 pi times 1 is the total distance. And speed is distance over time. Well, how many angles are in the unit circle? We go from 0 all the way to 2 pi. So it travels 2 pi distance in 2 pi seconds, or in other words, it travels um, 1 unit per second. Its speed is equal to 1. So what does that tell us? Well, I'm going to have to show you a little bit of stuff that might remind you of physics. I'm going to draw a vector. So a vector, don't be too scared from this word, a vector is just a direction with a magnitude. It's a direction with, uh, how, with how long it is. Right, so it's pointing in a certain direction. The direction this is pointing is the direction the particle is going at that moment in time. The particle is moving around in a circle, so its direction is kind of always rotating. But I don't think it's super hard to believe that this is actually a 90 degree angle here. It's, it's um, velocity, it's traveling at that brief moment, if we were to let go of it, would be tangent to the circle. Why? Because if it were anything a little less steep, it would actually come in and no longer be exactly one unit away from the center. And if it were anything more steep, if it were further away or like tilted, it would start to go away from the center of the circle. This is the only direction it can go, a 90 degree angle, and still kind of like stay one unit away from the circle. And even then, it's still going to be changing a little bit every single time, right? So this isn't fixed. It's not going in that direction permanently. That's just the direction it's currently going. So I'm going to call this, this is the velocity vector. And, I, and I'm going to decompose this into a vertical and a horizontal strip. And we know that this side of the triangle is equal to 1 because that's how fast it's going. So let's try and figure out, okay, how fast is it going up and how fast is it going to the left, right? So we want to figure out this side and this side. Okay, well, um, let's see. I got some triangles on here, right triangles. That's a right triangle. This is a right triangle. Um, this angle and this angle add up to 90 degrees because this is a right triangle, right? 90 plus these two add up to 180, so these two add up to 90. But you notice that these two angles here also add up to 90, which means this angle has to be the same as this angle. You could also say these are alternate interior angles. But then we see that this was a right angle here, which means this angle and this angle add up to 90, so this one has to be the same as that one. But now this is a right triangle, and so we can actually say that these two add up to 90, so this angle is the same as this one. So we've got a lot of angles that are all the same. In other words, these two triangles have the same angles, and they both have a hypotenuse of 1, which means their side lengths are the same. So let's see. Cosine t goes right here. Cosine t goes right here, then, with the same angle. Cosine t is the height. Sine t here goes with the double angle mark I did, so this side is sine t. So this side of the triangle is sine t, this side is cosine t, and what this tells us, remember, the position here was cosine t comma sine t for the particle. The position of the particle was cosine t comma sine t. The velocity we figured out is cosine t, but kind of like rotated, right? Rotated by 90 degrees. Sine is rotated by 90 degrees. So if you remember, when we talked about derivatives, remember, Velocity is the derivative of position, but velocity is 
if we look at this x direction, that'll be negative sine. You see it's going in the negative direction there and cosine. This tells me the derivative of cosine t is negative sine t, and the derivative of sine t is cosine t. But wait, there's a little bit more I want to say. Actually, this idea of rotating is actually really important. We could say then that the derivative of sine t is sine t, but we've actually kind of like rotated it by 90 degrees. That's pi over 2 radians. So this is sine of t plus pi over 2. And the derivative of cosine t is the same thing, just rotated 90 degrees, pi over 2. So this is actually the, I, I think, a slightly nicer formula for the derivatives of sine and cosine, because you immediately kind of see from this that they have the same pattern. It's the function just rotated 90 degrees. Now it just so happens that the derivative of sine, we can actually rewrite this, Cosine is actually sine rotated by 90 degrees. And if we were to rotate that again another 90 degrees, we'd get sine rotated 180, which is going to be always the opposite. That's negative sine of t. So this is really where the minus sine comes from. And it's not so surprising if you actually think about this in terms of 90 degree rotation. But anyways, that's it. That is a simple, nice, elegant proof for why the derivative of cosine is negative sine and the derivative of sine is cosine. The only small little thing I didn't prove here was that this really was a 90 degree angle. That There is a very easy proof of this once you get to calculus 3. Um, there's a very easy proof. You can look it up. This is essentially the fact that the vector going around, the position vector, is always has magnitude 1. And so then because that has constant magnitude, you can show that its derivative has got to be perpendicular to it. And so there, there's a theorem. It's really easy to prove, but that's out of the scope for what we're doing now. Um, so look forward to that in Calc 3.